What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Chats with the Freak. My name is Emmy, and I have one of my favorite human beings on this week, uh, Mr. Ryan Roxy. How are you today, man? Thanks for having me on, Emmy. It's a pleasure to be here. This is probably a little bit of a change for you. I know we were talking for a few minutes before this. Um, you do a variety of different stuff um, from your guitar lessons to your um, podcast that you have going on right now. So this definitely is probably a little bit of a change for you coming on here instead of being the one doing the podcast. What I love most is that I get to talk about me for a while. I mean, it is very interesting to talk about other people and find out where their headspace is at, you know, through all of this uh, strange times that we are going through. But yeah, basically I'm holed up in my son's room slash recording studio where I film podcasts and record uh, podcasts and also a bunch of guitar content and lessons. So I'm in this room anyway. So the fact that we're doing self-quarantine anyway, it kind of works out as, as a positive for me. Yeah, your work's already inside anyway, to a degree. So um, obviously, when you're not on the road, um, touring with Cooper, doing your other stuff like that, I know you had you did a little bit of work for your solo album um, last summer, I believe, or the year yeah. before yeah, that. We did a few tours with um, my own solo album that was called that was released called Imagine Your Reality. We did a tour called the Planet X tour that had uh, myself uh artist named Brandy Gibbs as far as and as well as Joel Koshe and we're all sort of guitar player singers and we would each front a bit of the set so we called it Planet Acts and it was it was a really good time we did two of those types of tours across the US and hopefully he hopefully someday we can get back out there again but to be honest with you you know when we I am on tour with Alice Cooper I do spend a good amount of time either in dressing rooms or hold up in a hotel room. The only time I'm really outside is in the mornings when Alice Cooper and I go golfing. So I do get some fresh outdoors once in a while. That always surprises me with how many um, musicians are so into golf and I'm not, I'm definitely not throwing any shade on it. I don't personally play, but I'm not throwing any shade on it at all. But that always surprises me when I hear like, oh yeah, I'm on tour and I'm going golfing. And I'm just like, wait, what? Like, that's really cool. But it always just like, it always catches me a little off guard. I used to think we were kind of the anomaly, Alice and I, because we were so into it. We go out every single day, like five days a week while we're um, out on tour. You know, when out, when the tour ends, I hardly ever play golf because I don't get to golf under the same, cir same circumstances that I do with Alice. With Alice, I just ride the coattails, right? So with Alice, though, when he's off tour, he golfs seven days a week. So I always thought we were kind of the anomaly and didn't do it. But the more and more that uh, we started touring and reaching out to other bands, we found that there's at least one or two guys in each band that uh, finds golf very interesting. And I got to be honest with you, it really is one of those games that the older you get, the more it challenges you. And you realize that, you know, we are never going to be on the, that other golf tour. We're very lucky to be on a music tour because we're never going to get on the golf tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That That's funny. Yeah, like I, I hear about people like, oh, golfing, it's so relaxing and all this stuff. And it's not my thing, but I definitely, that has to be a good escape for everybody when they're on the road having something for you. It might be, it's golf, but other people, there has to be like something you can go to escape to or you're just going to kind of lose your mind out there. No, there's definitely therapeutic um it is relaxing but at the same time you know what it can be stressful and frustrating like no other sport like when you think you have it down you think you've figured out golf you think you have your swing down and all of a sudden you end up hitting you know one of the club owners windshields or something like that which <laughs> i've been around for not me personally but uh we've had some players that we've played with before that have done some damage to the uh <laughs> country club as well so i gotta say i being on the road, golf is a really nice deterrent of keeping uh, things in perspective. It's like I don't go out all night anymore. You know, I used to. So it's, it's for my lifestyle and what I do now in life. Golf is a great sort of root part of my daily routine when I'm out on the road on touring and stuff. Plus, it does. It keeps me from staying up too late at night, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. Staying up late, doing, being out, doing whatever. I definitely get that because I do little runs with my photography stuff and I I'll get done shooting the show literally stop at a taco bell and then go back and edit all night so you can definitely sometimes get in the get in your head a little bit where you're like oh maybe I should be like going to a bar going out and with other people but yeah no having something to kind of keep you grounded like for me it's my editing when I'm out there right um for you it's golf so definitely having a schedule of waking up in the morning to to make sure that we're I'm up because with Alice you know if you're five minutes early you're kind of five minutes late he's the most punctual (laughs) on time person so when he says 7 a.m lobby call for golf it actually really means 6 50 in the morning so yeah there's no real room <laughs> even though i'm no stranger to a late night you know taco bell run when we're on the road with planet axe and stuff luckily with alice cooper we have after show food so we're able to um, manage our late night eating a little bit better <laughs> Yeah, not end up a Taco Bell like me. <laughs> Getting Sierra Miss and some like freaking um, black bean burrito things. <laughs> I love it all. Yeah, for sure. So you mentioned um, the tour for your that you were on doing promoting Imagine Your Reality. I was really surprised when I was reading up on that album that that was your first like solo album because you did work with the Electric Angels, obviously, um, in the late 80s, early 90s. And you also had Roxy 77. Um, Why was that your first solo record? I feel after this many years, um, people... The majority of people that know me know me from being Alice's guitar player for a number of years. I initially joined Alice's band in 96. Um, I was on hiatus I when I moved to Sweden for about five years. Then since 2012, we've been touring ever since. So I think a lot of people know me as Alice's guitarist. And that's cool because they don't know my solo or band stuff, whether it's Dad's Porno Mag, uh, uh, Roxy 77, as well as like a Swedish band I was in uh, called Casablanca, and my first band, like you mentioned, Electric Angels. So, being that they know me as a guitarist first, uh, the producers that I was working with on this album said, Look, let's make a guitar driven, guitar focused album. You, we, Know that you can, you know, you can sing the songs, you can write the songs, but let's really focus on the guitar, the riffs, the solos, the playing. And overall, it's a much more guitar driven and focused album than I've ever done in my previous, uh, I wouldn't say solo uh, projects, but my previous bands, whether it's Roxy 77 or Dad's Porno Mag. So, yeah, I I think, uh, and besides, they said, look, let's just call it Ryan Roxy because. That way you can have, you can front the band with a bunch of different lineups if you need to, which we actually have had a bunch of different lineups when I've gone to Greece, for instance, or played shows here in the UK, in Europe, or even in a different lineup in the United States when we did Planet X. You know, with Planet X, we had uh, a drummer named Kenny Bailey and a guitarist and bass player named Robbie Miller. And um, also Joel played in that band that I mentioned earlier. So Ryan Roxy fronting it as that allows me to have a um, multitude of backing bands to help me out when I go out and do the solo runs. Yeah, yeah. You have more of a free reign to be like, okay, whoever's playing drums for me in the States doesn't either doesn't have the availability to travel or can't. So I can grab somebody else that I know that's also really talented and kind of put them in the spot just to kind of fill the tour. I, I that definitely gives you a lot of freedom. And I, I definitely see why that was a good option well, for you. Weird now, if you think about it in retrospect, maybe I was just planning ahead because who knows what's going to happen as far as touring goes, as far as traveling goes from here on out now that the world has sort of changed with touring and playing music so you know being able to adapt to different bands you know maybe i will only be able to have a european band in europe or an american band in america but hopefully and fingers crossed we'll be out there touring and i'll be playing my solo stuff sooner than later 
Yeah, yeah, hopefully. This has been definitely taking a hit on the um, like performance aspect of music. And I feel like that's the front that's getting hit the most from this. And I'm not trying to hate on any other industry by any means or discount them. But I feel like the performance industry is definitely taking the biggest hit and the biggest blow from all this um, coronavirus well, stuff. There's no doubt that everybody's been affected to one point or another. But as an entertainer, um, yeah, this has definitely hit us hard and hit anybody that's in the entertainment business uh, pretty hard. But you know what? As musicians, as sort of a, a guitar player that's been in the trenches for many years, it's always been a struggle and a sort of a financial crisis of one point, of one level or another um, that I've gone through my entire career. I've always had to make something work, you know, make a situation work and, you know, given a certain set of circumstances. So I feel that, you know, now we just need to find a new type of stage, you know, and some type of new platform for us to perform on. And that's sort of what I've been doing, you know, keeping busy with the guitar lessons, keeping busy with these Sunday live stream Sundays that I'm doing as well as the, uh, in the trenches podcast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I love what you're doing with those online guitar lessons. And I know you've been doing this for a long time. And for anybody who like is listening to this that doesn't know really what they are, can you kind of talk about what you do exactly for your online guitar lessons? Absolutely. Um, we have just started a Kickstarter campaign. Um, it's going really well, fingers crossed, and everything works out for us because we have a system in place that we have developed we're confident of, we have actually filmed the demo, so to speak. We have a beta testing version of it and that we're sending out to people that actually help contribute to our official version that will come out as soon as we get the funding for it. But it's basically called the System 12 Guitar Method. And I will teach you how to play guitar online in 12 lessons. You'll learn 12 riffs, 12 songs. And basically all you have to spend is about maybe 12 minutes to I would like you to spend a half an hour a day learning on it and I guarantee you'll learn how to play guitar in about 12 weeks so it's one of those things that I've been working on and perfecting over the years with the my teaching technology and the team that I put around myself uh, they're teachers as well so we kind of gathered in all these guitar life hacks um, sort of some things that might be considered common sense, but other things that you might not have thought about when you're looking at the guitar. The whole idea is to make looking at the guitar simple, playing it even simpler, and then not confuse you and give you the inspiration to know that you can play guitar much quicker than you ever thought possible. So that's our sort of our campaign in a nutshell. It's called the 12 system, um, called the system 12 guitar method. And you can check us out on Kickstarter, or you can just go to ryanroxy.com and the big stickers right there saying Kickstarter. That's, that's awesome. And I'll link all of that in the description of this podcast too, for anybody who's interested in that. I've looked at some of your lessons on probably over the last year, and they're definitely really clear and really um, to the point and are not confusing at all. And I think they're great for anybody kind of like dabbling in it. I'm not a guitar player by any means, um, but they're definitely very helpful and very informational. Well, I totally appreciate that. I, I think my philosophy is very simple. Uh, you know, unlike I think a lot of guitar teachers that need you as a, uh, they need you as a, as a student so that they continue continually have income so perhaps their methods take longer you know over time i want to get you playing guitar as fast as possible so that you're successful you're happy about it you're inspired and you're ready to move on to the next level and you'll hopefully tell your friends about it so we will always have a new sort of influx of I guess we call them soldiers in our Roxy Guitar Army. That's sort of what our group is called, the Roxy Guitar Army. And we're building up this sort of platoon of guitar players that are learning quite quickly and they're actually spreading the word. We're really happy about it. Yeah, that's incredible. You got some really awesome stuff going on with your guitar lessons over there and everything that you're doing. 
I know we touched on this a little bit, but I definitely want to bring it back up um, about your band, The Electric Angels. Sure. Um, I have a note here that you guys opened for Mother Love Bone at one point. You guys were kind of like a glammy rock band, to my knowledge. Um, could you just tell me a little bit about that? Because there was just, there was, seems to be a lot of info that I kind of found that I was trying to like piece together. Okay, we not only opened up for Mother Love Bone, Electric Angels got our record deal on that show, playing with Mother Love Bone and another oh, wow. band called Dogs to More. And for those of you that don't know who Mother Love Bone is, that you definitely know <laughs> the incarnation of or, or what became Mother Love Bone was Pearl Jam. So they uh, basically were on tour with Dogs to More. The band that I was in called Electric Angels were based out of New York City. We played a club on a regular weeknight. And the record label that came to the show early, I might add, thought that they were watching Mother Love Bone because Mother Love Bone was on the, you know, was one of the sort of bands to watch out for back in those days. And so the record company people came earlier, saw us play, came backstage basically offered us a record deal and um, the rest is one album history. I guess you could say <laughs> we made one album for Atlantic and I'm really proud of that album. But then years later, they just released a, a second album that was basically going to be our second album released on Atlantic. But uh, we left the label before that had a chance to uh, sort of get put out and then sort of got, I guess, the album is appropriately titled Lost in the Atlantic. So we got swallowed up, but I, I am really proud of that one record that we did uh, for Atlantic Records called Self-Titled Electric Angels. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, when I was reading about that, because I'm a huge um, fan of like the 90s, um, late 80s, early 90s Seattle scene per se. And nice. Mother Love Bone was definitely a huge influence in that. And not a lot of people know about them, know about Andrew Wood and all that stuff. And that record that they released was incredible. So when I saw that you guys opened for them, I was like, wait a minute, I need to talk to him about that because that's really awesome. Well, like back in the early 90s, after Electric Angels and when I moved back to Los Angeles, I actually was in a Seattle band for a short time um, and they were called Sweetwater. Really cool, straight ahead rock and roll, had a, a, a touch of grunge in them. It was a little post grunge and... Um, it made a really good album called Super Friends. So, if, yeah, if you like Mother Love Bone, you like that whole Seattle scene, go check out uh, Sweetwater and Super Friends. I'm definitely writing that down right now because was, I need to check that out. It was produced by Dave Jordan, who's the same guy that produced all those uh, great grunge albums out of coming out of Seattle because uh, he produced Alice in Chains and a bunch of other bands like that. And and oddly yeah, enough, that... we just I just wrapped up a. Um, Australian tour with Alice um, right before all hell broke loose. We were in Australia and New Zealand and we were on tour with a band called MC 50 and the guitar player in that band is Kim Thiel from uh, Soundgarden. So that was quite yeah. cool to hang out with him. Yeah. I met him last year. He was at a, a mud honey show up in um, Pittsburgh, actually here in the States and I was really like, wait, why is he here? And he's so cool. I went up and talked to him and he was so chill. And I was fangirling out just a little bit. It was fine. But he, he's an incredible person. I love talking to him. All you have to do is listen to some of those albums that Soundgarden made. And it's, it's not hard to figure out why he would fangirl out. I fanboyed out myself, you know, because <laughs> he's just played on some iconic songs in an iconic band and like you said he was just so chill and cool i've actually um, asked him to get on the uh, in the trenches podcast so hopefully that's going to happen pretty soon yeah i'll definitely keep my eye out for that yeah kim's such a he, he's such a gentleman and he's so chill because i walked up to him i was like hey i know you don't know me but like i'm a huge fan of your band and he was just like oh hi how are you and like was so down to earth and i was just like oh you're actually really cool how do i act <laughs> You know what? The older I get, maybe the more in the down the road I get as far as being lucky enough to be able to be on tour with Alice and play the type of level venues we get to play. The more bands that I meet 
that are also in that same position, you find that the members of those bands are just happy and grateful to be in that position as well. So it's really cool to meet these guys that have been through the ups and the downs, and now they're just, you know, really sort of thriving on on playing these big rock shows that people are still responding to this day. Yeah, yeah, they're still super relevant, super like influential on everything going on in the music industry, and they're just so chill. And I totally agree. I feel like the people that are in those more iconic, for lack of a better term, um, bands are some of the sweetest human beings that I've like ever met. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Ryan, for coming on to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you're staying safe over in Sweden through all this madness going on with the coronavirus. Hey, it's the first time in our lives where we're all feeling the same thing in real time. You know, usually when something kind of traumatic happens it's over there or it's you know way over there someplace else but now we're all feeling it at the same time so yeah i'm gonna do my best to stay you know pretty much locked in my my son's room and and just continue to uh, record my podcast continue to record my guitar lessons my guitar content and hopefully you guys can come by my world anytime you want to come by ryanroxy.com or if you just want to uh, check me out on instagram it's at ryan roxy would love to uh love to have you and i will link all of that in the description of this podcast thanks again ryan i really appreciate it and i hope you have a safe and a uh, great day thanks so much for having me Ellie. all right have a great day and uh, enjoy the ride you too bye see ya